Welcome everyone to Trial Hanumatan Guide. In this video, I'll explain all patterns and mechs in detail for both normal and hard mode of Trial Hanumatan. Let's get started. Trial Hanumatan comes in two difficulties. You get a first clear box for clearing either one, but hard gives you more gold and a clear title called Earth Pulverizer. If you clear hard mode first, normal mode gold will also be given automatically. There are some pattern changes to hard mode, but it's mostly a same fight. For battle items, you wanna bring Dark Bomb, Splendid Sacred Charm, and Atro for DPS, Stimulant for support. For cards, you should use Guardian Card Set. If you don't have these cards at max level, you can use Light of Salvation instead, but Card Set makes a huge difference. For Entropy classes, it's much stronger and you take significantly less damage from the boss. Especially in hard mode, the damage is quite unforgiving and can kill you very easily. Let's briefly go over the timeline of the fight. Around 70% boss HP, there's a phase change and a few more patterns are added in phase 2. There's another phase change around 35% boss HP and monkey turns all white. White monkey has different patterns and you can basically think of it as a completely different boss. There's a white mech at 18% boss HP and few patterns are changed after the mech. Below the timeline is an enraged timer to check if your party DPS is on a good track for clear. There are a few things you should know in advance. Just like in classic Hanumatan, there's ice stacks. However, there's no crit rate or cooldown buffs, only increased attack power and party buffs. You get a stack for attacking the boss, 5 for head attacking, and you lose 3 for getting hit. You also take more damage when you have higher stacks. During the target counter pattern, if you do the second counter, you get 20 stacks and everyone else gets 10. Some patterns make everyone lose 10 stacks on getting hit. High stacks are capped at 80 stacks, and maintaining high stacks is a crucial part of beating DPS check for this fight. Also, counter is very important in Trial Hanu. Support should bring two counters, and it is recommended that you have at least one class who doesn't use counter in normal rotations. Let's move on to special patterns in phase 1 and 2. The most important special pattern in this fight is target counter pattern. The boss raises up his right hand and dashes two times towards the aggro. You can counter the boss before the second dash, and if you successfully counter the boss, he does another counter right away. Countering the second counter gives everyone eye stacks, and a personal counter gets a target mark. Target counter pattern is a very good DPS window because the boss only targets the player who has a target mark for about 20 seconds. Supports or classes like Glancer or Destroyer should take the second counter so that everyone else can have a long free DPS time. This is when Dark Bombs, Atrophins, and Full Buffs should be used. The boss does this pattern every 40 to 50 seconds ish. The first pattern after the second counter is always a punch, followed by a side stomp. The boss will follow the target before punching, so you can use this time to pull the boss out of the wall. If the target gets hit by this punch, everyone loses 10 stacks, so don't get hit. After the punch, the boss stomps either left or right of himself, giving damage and knocking off players that get hit. He stomps the side where target was standing after the punch. So as a party, you need to decide which side you're going to bait the stomp. Your EM puck standard is to bait the stomp to the boss's left or gauntlet side. Notice that a stomp hitbox hits a little over a semicircle. Now let's take a look at the set of patterns boss uses while target mark lasts. After the first punch stomp pattern, the boss will do 3 more of the following patterns. Fast punches. Everyone loses 10 stacks if you get hit by the last punch. Laser beam. The boss shoots a laser beam towards the target and if someone gets hit, he does it again. This pattern drops your stacks by a lot, so you should not get hit, but if you just get hit by the last tick of the first laser, you get an extra DPS time. Uppercut. If someone gets hit by the uppercut, he does a follow-up attack. Getting hit by this follow-up creates a broken glass effect on screen and drops everyone's stack by 10. Triple Stomp. The boss stomps in front of him two times and stomps bigger area after. If you get hit by this last stomp, everyone loses 10 stacks. Move to his side to dodge this pattern. Clone Lasers. Unlike the normal clone laser pattern, the boss can turn and will shoot the lasers to the target. So the target should stay in front and do side steps to dodge the lasers left and right. The first laser always start with his right or white hand and he does it 4 times. 4 punches. The boss punches the front while taking 4 step 4 times towards the target. If you get hit by his first or third punch everyone loses 10 stacks and if you get hit by the fourth punch, 
the boss does a follow-up punch. You should just move far back to dodge this pattern. Now if you're the support, while dodging these patterns, make sure to give full buff and maintain the uptime. Also, don't go too far because you want to refresh your earning buff in between patterns. Now let's move on to Howling Patterns. Howling Pattern does not share internal cooldown with other special patterns. There's four types of Howling Patterns, but you only see two in Phase 1. You can see all four in Phase 2. If the boss punches multiple times after Howling and backsteps once, it's a Stagger check. The Stagger window is very short, but the Stagger check is not that high. If you fail the Stagger, the boss attacks the front. If the boss punches multiple times and backsteps twice, it's an uppercut. If someone gets hit by this uppercut, the boss does a follow-up pattern by giving damage and Earthquake near him. Earthquake can be immune with Guardian Tune. If the boss does two slow punches and backsteps once, it's a retaliation pattern. The threshold is very low, so do not hit him at all. If you hit him, you will get knocked away very far. If the boss does two slow punches and backsteps twice, it's a co-op counter. You need two people for the counter, and if you fail, he attacks the front. Let's move on to special patterns. There are three kinds of special patterns. They all share the same ICD, but you only see Supernova Counter in Phase 1. Supernova Counter. This pattern has about 2 minutes of internal cooldown in Phase 1. The timer starts after the encounter. The boss creates a ball in front of him and punches in front of him. Then the boss does a single counter, followed by a co-op counter. In normal mode, there is no first counter, there's only a co-op counter. The person who does this first counter gets pushed away very far and cannot participate in the co-op counter. Your party should decide who is going to take this first counter before you go in, but it is recommended that supports take the first counter because supports usually bring two counters, and DPS doing the first counter is not only a DPS loss, but also burns their stand up. If your group has a very bad counter, then you can use support DR to skip this pattern, but otherwise it's a wipe damage. 40 Stagger It's another special pattern that gets added in phase 2. Everyone gets stunned and needs to complete a typing test. After the typing test, your mouse control is inverted. Look above your mana bar to check the remaining debuff duration. The boss is not DR during this pattern, so it's a good pattern to burst. Consider using full buff, dark bombs, and atros here. Fire Stagger You need to stagger the boss while dodging the ground, and there's a counter after the stagger. It's also a good timing for support awakening. The boss is DR during stagger check, but stagger is pretty tight, so you should not be saving skills. For safe spots, start from his back and move to his right after the stomp. Don't forget about the counter at the end. Ice stagger is similar to fire stagger, but it has different safe spots. You start from his right and move to his back after the explosion. If you fail the stagger or counter, the boss attacks nearby area and creates puddles with high damage. You should pull him out of the area, but make sure you don't lose stacks while moving him out. When the boss reaches around 70% of boss HP, he does fire and ice stagger back to back before phase change. The order is random and there is no counter after the first stagger. Second stagger is a version from phase 2 of normal Hanumatan. Support should use their awakening shield before second stagger. If you successfully stagger the second one, there's no counter again, and you have a short DPS window for approximately 7 seconds. Come to his front after a short DPS time, and boss will grab you, moving to a different area. This is why you don't need to bring Pharaoh. Before we move on to basic patterns, here's an Ice Fire version. Also, do not use your buffs here because he does a target counter right away after phasing. For speedrun, one person can bring Pharaoh instead of Sacred Charm, and then supports can Awakening Shield and just use Pharaoh. Now let's go over the basic patterns in Phase 1 and 2. Laser Cannon. The orange attack will push you away. Teleport Stomp. Inside safe attack is added. If you're close enough, back is also safe. Clone lasers. Identical to normal Hanumatan pattern. Backstep laser. The boss backsteps twice and stomps the front. If no one gets hit, nothing happens. If someone gets hit, he does a follow-up laser pattern slowly rotating clockwise. Laser pattern. 
The boss shoots a laser beam towards the aggro. If someone gets hit, he turns and shoots a bigger laser towards the initial aggro. If you got hit, ping to let your teammates know. 4 poops. Everyone gets 4 individual poops while the boss stomps the ground in an X shape all by a cross shape. This is not a DPS pattern and you should walk with your teammate instead of trapping them. In phase 2, a follow up pattern that attacks the front and earthquakes is added in the end. The damage is very high so you should either go out and come back or spacebar to the back. Triple stomp. Outside inside follow up attack is added in the end. Earthquake jump. Boss jumps and earthquakes nearby area on landing. You should spacebar or use splendid charm if you don't have guardian team. Punches. The last punch will push you away. You can also take steps before punching. There's also a rare follow up attack where he jumps. Teleport laser. The boss disappears and 6 clones shoot laser at where he was. He then appears behind the aggro and shoots a laser with a clone on his left. The boss will look at the aggro before disappearing so you can predict where he's gonna reappear. If you get hit by the boss laser, he does a big laser again. Uppercut. If no one gets hit, the boss slams the front. If someone gets hit, the boss will try to grab the person in front of him. If someone gets grabbed, you can save that person after 3 slams. If you fail the counter, the boss will slam the person 3 more times and does an inside save pattern. Punch plus a side stomp. You normally don't see this pattern outside target counter time, but taunting the boss causes this pattern. Grab. This is a phase 2 pattern and boss grabs everyone on his left instead of attacking his right. If you get grabbed, he will slam 2 times then backstab, slam 3 more times before your teammates can save you as counter. Slam. If someone is stunned by an earthquake, the boss will dunk the player to the ground. The damage is very high so you should use splendid charm to save your teammates when you see someone stunned. When boss HP reaches around 35%, boss roars briefly and does 5 punches toward the aggro while giving 5 poops. You should place the poops outside and come in for a counter. This time, there is no DPS time and everyone should come to the front right away before phasing. Don't forget to hit the boss after the counter or you will lose stacks. After phasing, the boss turns all white and phase 3 begins. White Monkey is a completely different boss and a lot of his patterns are very annoying. New target counter pattern. The boss dashes toward the target 3 times and you can counter the third dash. Support should counter and take the target. The dash doesn't hit players and only the slam on landing does damage. Triple Waves. This is always the first pattern after target counter in phase 3 and 4. The boss slams the ground 3 times, making a wave of puddles towards the target. The target should move side by side to maintain the head direction. This is the only long enough free DPS pattern in phase 3 and 4, so you should be full bursting here. Now let's look at the set of patterns during target mark. Triple jump. The boss jumps toward the target 3 times. Note that second jump only turns and doesn't move. 180. After taking 2 forward steps, boss raises his hand on one side and swings to the opposite side. It'll push everyone in the front and the opposite side. The side he raised hand is safe, or just move out a little to dodge. Dash slam. The boss dashes and slams the ground. Last mech of the fight. In Yang circle. When boss HP reaches around 18%, he stands up on his feet and jumps up. You should stay out of the middle to dodge the landing. Then, he starts howling while DR. Everyone should grip at his back and support should give awakening shield. After howling, there is a DPS window and the boss will show the order of explosion. Then, a green circle shows up and this is your safe spot for 3 wipe attacks during this mech. One random person becomes a target each time and the target needs to bait the attack so that it doesn't hit the green circle. If green circle is hit by the explosion, it breaks and you have no way to survive wipe attacks without time stop or crisis evasion. Note that wipe attack hits everywhere on the map. This mech has two versions. The boss attacks three times in order of either left, right, X, or right, left, cross. For left explosion, the target needs to move counterclockwise of green circle. Remember that after baiting the attack, the target needs to come back into the green circle to dodge the wipe attack. For right explosion, you need to move clockwise of green circle.
for X shape, you can either stay in the middle or go opposite side to open back attack. Here's the other version starting with the right explosion first. For cross shape, you can stay on the outer ring of yin yang circle as shown in the picture. Now there are some pattern changes after this mech, so we call it phase 4. Let's go over the basic patterns in phase 3 and 4. Backstep jump. Boss backsteps and jumps. If the boss takes front step 3 times, he jumps turning to the aggro and backsteps, sending shockwaves to his front. If you're the aggro, try not to bait his backstep into the wall. Backstep patterns in phase 3 and 4 is always a back save. Counter pattern. Boss slams the ground 3 times, rotating 120 degrees each time. You can counter him on the last slam, and this is a free DPS pattern, so consider full bursting here. You can predict the last slam by looking at the first two. Triple jump. Boss jumps toward a random person 3 times in a row, so focus on dodging. Also, while the boss is jumping, your skills miss. 360 inside. This is a very dangerous pattern and you need to focus on dodging. Boss starts rotating clockwise, sending shockwaves and exploding around him. He then sends shockwave in all directions with an inside safe pattern in the end. The shockwave paralyzes you and explodes again, so if you start getting hit, you'll get hit multiple times. If the boss slowly slams the ground two times, it's an earthquake jump. You need to spacebar the earthquake and place the individual poop outside. Poops have a very high damage, so if you don't have a space bar, make sure you get a Guardian Tune or a Splendid Charm. Remember, if the boss slams the ground two times fast, it's a 180. Jump Jump Boss jumps in the same spot four times with puddles outside. He earthquakes a wide area on a last jump. Use space bar or you can immune the earthquake with Splendid Charm or Guardian Tune. If you're the aggro, keep some distance and maintain head position for your teammates. Grab. The boss grabs a person and slams the ground. Then, you have to stagger him to save your teammate. Don't forget to dodge the initial slam. Right hand attack. The boss swings his right hand and attack his right side. Backstab shockwave. If the boss backstabs, quickly follow his back and dodge the shockwave. In phase 4, he attacks much wider range. Try not to push him to the wall, and if you cannot make it to the back, you can dodge outside. So just a dark bomb strat. This is how I do it. DPS players use three dark bombs during target counter in each phase. Supports use their dark bombs with full buff during special patterns such as fire or ice stagger or quarty stagger, and triple slam counter pattern in the last phase is also a good pattern. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content like this.